Hi guys, this is gonna be a hands-on lesson. We're going to launch a Windows instance running on EC2, and we're going to create a new EBS volume, an extra EBS volume for it, and attach it to the operating system. And then we're gonna look at how we can actually extend that volume size as well. So first thing to do is we're gonna launch our instance. So just head into EC2, let's go to instances, launch, now I'm going to scroll down and choose Microsoft Windows Server 2019 base. It's going to be a T2 Micro. Click on Next. We don't need to make any changes here. Let's just go through the security groups and choose our web access. Now make sure you've got the RDP port 3389 open inbound from any source or from your IP address. Let's click on Review and Launch and Launch. So that's launching and while that's happening, we're gonna come down to the Elastic Block Store here on the left. Click on Volumes, and you can see already that there's a volume here and it's in use. So that's the volume, the root EBS volume. It's a GP2, so remember the general purpose two. That's the SSD backed volume type that we get by default with our instances. And I'm just gonna click on Create Volume. Now this is where we can choose the different volume type that we wanted to create. So we can create a general purpose, we can create a provisioned IOPS. We've got cold, throughput optimized, and that magnetic. So remember I mentioned you still can get a magnetic in volume type here. Now, I'm just gonna use a provisioned IOPS for this one. Now with provisioned IOPS, you get up to 50 IOPS per gigabyte. If you hover over this little information icon here, it tells you that. And it also mentions that for general purpose SSD, you get up to three IOPS per gigabyte. So remember there was up to 16,000 IOPS for the GP2 volume type and up to 64,000 IOPS of volume for the provisioned IOPS SSD, the IO1. Now, that being said, you do have to have your volume big enough to allow that amount of IOPS and that's where the IOPS per gigabyte calculation comes in. So for example here, we have a 100 gigabyte volume. So what happens if we try to change this to 64,000 IOPS? Well, it says no, that exceeds the maximum ratio. So what about if I change this to 5,000? That's okay, what about 5,001? Well, that's where it goes over. So you need to understand that the size of your volume has an impact on the amount of IOPS that you can actually provision. Now, in this case, I don't need a volume that big, so let's just put this down to 10 gigabytes and 500 IOPS. You can now select your availability zone. So remember, your EC2 instance must be in the same availability zone as your EBS volume. So if I want to attach this to my instance, it has to be in the same AZ. Now I know I launched my instance into AP Southeast 2B. If you don't know, then just go back to EC2 and check where your instance is and then actually deploy your EBS volume in the same AZ. Now, here you've got snapshots. So these are ones that are available, so they're kind of shared in the marketplace. That means that you could actually restore the snapshot into the volume. So the data in the snapshot will actually be put onto the volume that you provision. You can also choose to encrypt. And then if you encrypt, you can choose a key. So in this case, this is a KMS key, so a AWS key management service key. Now I'm not gonna encrypt this one. I'm just gonna create the volume. So that's it, that's being created and we can see that it's in the creating state here. So once it finishes creating, it will be available. And at this point we can go and attach the volume and then we can find our instance. We've only got one, so it's easy to identify. It will select a default device. We can just leave that and click on attach. So that's it, the device is now in use. So let's go to our operating system and try and connect to our instance. So I'm gonna click on connect, get password, then I'm just gonna find my key pair file and click on decrypt. And then this is the information you're gonna need with your RDP client to then connect to your EC2 instance. I'm logged on to my Windows instance now and I'm just gonna find the disk management utility and let's click on this option here, create and format hard disk partitions. And so what we can see here is we have our volume. So we have this 10 gigabyte volume. I need to bring it online and then I need to initialize it, click on okay. And then we can actually create a volume. 
So at this point, we can create a volume. I'm gonna leave it as a D drive, go through the default settings, finish, and then we can actually open this, and this is our volume. So for example, we could now just create a test file that just says, this is a test.txt. So what I want to do now is actually show you about resizing your volume. So we know that this one is ex exactly 10 gigabytes. So let's go back to the console and let's say we need to increase this to 15 gigabytes. So back in the console, I'm gonna head down to Elastic Block Store. I'm gonna choose this IO1 volume and go to Actions and then Modify Volume. And I'm just gonna change the size from 10 to 15. As you know, you can also change the volume type here as well, but I'm gonna keep it as it is and just click on Modify. And it gives you a bit of a warning here. It tells you it might take some time for the performance changes to take effect. And it also tells you you might need to extend the OS file system to actually take advantage of that new space. So we know that, let's click on yes, and that request has succeeded. So let's go back to our Windows instance. Back on our Windows instance, let's go to action, click on refresh, and we can see that it now has uh, an extra bit of space, so there's five gig unallocated. So what I'm gonna do is extend this D drive to take advantage of that extra space. Click on next, click on finish, and now I've got a 15 gig drive. So remember that's really important for the exam. You will see the extra space but your file system won't see it. So you do have to go in and extend your file system um, in order to be able to take advantage of that extra space you've just allocated. That's it for this lesson. Now please leave your Windows instance running because we will use it in the next lesson where we're gonna learn about taking backups using snapshots.